In this Excel video, I will teach you how to use the Excel Choose Calls and Choose Rows functions. Let's get started. So here I am in a spreadsheet. It's got some basic information about a small business. And let's say I would like to copy some of this data, but not the whole range, and put it somewhere else in my spreadsheet. One way to do that, and do it dynamically, is by using the Choose Calls function. So I'm gonna click here on cell G1, and I'll type equals Choose Calls, which stands for Choose Columns. I'll put in my left parenthesis. Next, Excel is expecting the array, or the range. So I'm gonna click on cell A1 and drag until I've selected E6, A1 through E6. That's my array. And then I'll put in a comma. Now I need to choose which columns I want to include. So let's say I don't need the ID, I just need name. So I'll put in two for second column, comma. I don't need the age, so I'll skip three. I'll put in four for department, comma five for salary. Put in my right parenthesis, tap enter, and just that data that I've chosen using the choose calls function is copied over. I can now highlight the column letters and double click between any two to resize it perfectly, and I'm good to go. Now, one thing to be aware of is choose calls is a dynamic function, and what's happening here is even though it looks like this data goes from G1 through I6, that's not actually true. All of this information is being generated from the formula that I put in G1. So if I click here on H2 and tap delete, nothing really changes, nothing really happens. If I tap backspace, okay, it changed briefly, but then I moved away from H2 and it was restored. The reason why is all of this information is stored here. It's generated by this formula and that formula is dependent on the information that's here. So let's say Alice switches from HR to IT. I tap enter and it dynamically updates here at the right. Now at the end of this video, I will show you a trick that makes it so that you can get this information and put it not in the same spreadsheet, but actually on a different sheet. This is a very useful way to take advantage of the choose calls and choose rows functions. But first, let's take a look at choose rows. And for this, I'm gonna go over here to cell A8. I'll click, type equals, choose rows, left parenthesis. Again, Excel is expecting an array or a range. So I'll click and drag from A1 to E6. I'll put in my comma, and then which row do I want? I still want row one, comma, I want row two, comma, but let's say I don't need the information about Bob, Charlie, or David, so I'll skip to row six. I should put in my right parenthesis, tap enter on the keyboard, and there I have just the information I'm looking for. I selected each row that I needed. Okay, so choose calls and choose rows. Both of those work great, but that's all done on the same spreadsheet that contains the original data. What if I want information that's on this first sheet when it's updated to populate onto sheet two and maybe sheet three, sheet 10, whatever? Well, I can set up a similar formula on sheet two. So let's try this out. I'll click on cell A1, type equals, choose calls, left parenthesis, and then I'm gonna click back on sheet one and click and drag to highlight my range A1 through E6. I'll go back to sheet two. Now check this out. Here on sheet two, it's saying sheet two is where I want to draw the information from, but that's not right. I need it to come from sheet one. So I'm gonna change it back to sheet one, put in a comma, and then I just want rows two, three, and four. I'll put in my right parenthesis, tap enter, and it's pulling that information that I chose, just those three columns, it's pulling them from sheet one and putting them on sheet two. So this can be very useful as you develop complicated workbooks with multiple sheets. I could click and drag, double click between the columns to perfectly resize it. Of course, I could click on row number one and bold or make any other adjustments that I want to. Now notice the ages of these people, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. If I go back to sheet one and, okay, they get a year older, I can change that to 26, 31, 36, 41, 
and 46. Did it change on the other pages? You can see it changed here, but 26, 31, 36, if I go to sheet two, 26, 31, 36, it's updated automatically on the other sheet. Now, of course, this technique would also work with choose rows, equal, choose rows, left parenthesis, click on sheet one. I need to select the range that I'm gonna pull the information from, go back to sheet two, and I need to change this back from sheet two to sheet one, put in my comma, and then I just want rows one, two, and four. That's the IT department. I put in my right parenthesis, tap enter, and there I have the IT department. Now, one thing about these dynamic functions you know, these formulas are being executed here in cell A1 in this case, in A11 in this case, and there's really not anything editable in these other cells. Having said that, these numbers are still usable and the text can still be referred to and used in formulas. So let's take a look. I'm gonna click here, type in average. This is gonna be the average age of this group. I'll click here on cell B7. I'll type equals average left parenthesis. I can click and drag to select the range of numbers that I want to average. I should put in my right parenthesis, tap enter, and it calculated the average. So even though this information is being produced from cell A1 with this formula, I can still add up these numbers using formulas. So I hope you've learned how to use the Excel choose calls and choose rows functions and that you'll find many great ways to use these two relatively new Excel functions. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member but you could also click the thanks button below the video. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I need to take a minute to say thank you so much to my super techie and ultra techie channel members. I appreciate you. In many ways, it's because of you and your support that I'm able to continue making these educational videos. Thank you so much.